Dave from DNA Reptilia here. We're down in the rat room today and we're here to make this even more efficient to last even longer for when we are culling our rats. Let's go. We are actually here to try to get this set up that has a bubble counter attached to it onto here so we can actually um, put CO2 into our uh, CO2 chamber a lot slower from when we're calling rats and with a lot more control. Because that setup, you gotta turn it and hear it hiss. You think you got it, you set it down, you come back in a few minutes it's done hissing. You don't have any fine control. So we're gonna try to do it with fine control. But, here's the kicker. I want it to be a set it and forget it type thing where you set it once and it automatically stops. So, this is actually, you'll see a little something on the bottom here. That is a 12 volt solenoid. This setup with the bubble counter attached to here is actually set up for, is actually for saltwater reef aquariums. Now, to turn this on and off, we need a 12 volt power supply, which this comes with. But I'm gonna interrupt that 12 volt power supply with this. This is a 12 volt timer. It runs on 12 volts, it can, it's actually upside down, it can run on 12 volts and it passes through 12 volts. You can have it so when you hit the power button, yes, we're down in the rat room, you're gonna be clicking. Hit the power button for whatever amount of time that you set, and it will send 12 volts to this for as long as I want to. So when I find out that it takes five minutes to actually put the rodents to sleep, I can have this set to five minutes, so only allow CO2 through here to go into our chamber for five minutes, and then it'll automatically shut off. For those of you who breed rats, it's a common thing to probably forget that you have CO2 running or that you put too much, or you're putting too much in. I'm trying to avoid putting too much. Okay, things you're gonna need for this is I'm using an Inkbird CO2 regulator with a bubble counter. You're gonna need to get CO2 safe tubing. Um, this tubing is, well it doesn't say what size it is, uh, 4 by 6 millimeter. It's a 4 millimeter inside with a 6 millimeter outside, um, and it's CO2 safe. It's not a soft tubing, it's actually quite firm of a tubing. Kind of something like uh, water lines for the rats, but just a different, different size. Um, to step this up a little bit for us, um, I got some six millimeter pu uh, push-in fittings, which are going to connect to this eight millimeter um, spring-loaded end, because since I've been using this setup, this forty-dollar setup, you know, this piece right here, along with the hose, is attached. It's like forty bucks, and it comes with the Tipman end. And this is for paintball, paintball setup. This is the ends that they use for Tipman um, or for paintballs. Tipman is this brand. You're able to get them separately. Um, I got this one with a female end. Hence why I have male end of these. Um, this is my little mini chamber. I have one of the male fittings in here. This fitting is a little differently. This is a one-way fitting. Air can go in, but it can't come back through. So, once I have the timer set to the right time, I can put this, say, two minutes. Two minutes is up, I can disconnect this, set it off to the side. CO2 or air will not be able to come back out of it, and these little containers are completely airtight. Um, they are rubber made. I use this for like doing pups and fuzzies and um, 
uh, ASF, smaller ASFs also. Anything that's really small that uh, so you can have a small volume of air to replace. Most importantly, this regulator will not fit on the top of that CO2 canister right away. You need an adapter. This guy. Mm -hmm. All the links for all this stuff will be down in the description. This guy will screw on the back side of this fairly easily. You don't want to get it hand tight, you want it actually tighter because it's going to be under pressure, CO2 pressure. And what it does is there's a little, there you go, there's a little nipple on the bottom in the inside that pushes in the canister to release CO2. So you got to make sure this is completely off, which doesn't take much to screw it all the way down because this is the on off. More advanced versions of these will have a dial on the front you can turn on and off, but I didn't want to spend that amount. Forgot about one more thing that you need. You need a barrel jack connector extension. Well, the reason why we're having an extension because we're literally going to cut this in half and strip the wires here so we have a male and a female barrel connector. There. Now, the only thing that sucks is you gotta buy 10 of these. If you can find them at your hardware store, awesome. Since they have like a plumber's tape on there already, I'm not gonna worry about it. The one thing you do wanna worry about is how tight that you make it. You want it tight. Tighter the better, so then uh, any CO2 won't come out of here. So you're not wasting it. Should just push right in. Here's my little fitting. Should just lift up, click on there. There you go. That should suffice. And now, I'm actually going to use a brand new canister. This is a brand new canister. Can't hear anything because it's full. Moment of truth. Did you hear that? Just a little bit one. And that's it. We're going to cut, I would say, about 25% of it off to hook up to this from here to the to that. And it, these are double sleeved. Okay, I fingered it out. I just figured it out. I didn't go to the online instructions, but okay. You can see. Flip it over. All right. Positive in, negative in. You need your positive to here that goes to your output. And then you need your negative way over on this side. Now what you do also is you take the negative from your second pin, switch it over to your third pin. So that's what this little wire is for. You know, it's just a bridge. Bridge from here to there. And that passes the 12 volts from the line in through the system. Once again, positive input and output, negative input, negative input, negative output. That's how this controller works. Now again, I still have it set up for 10 seconds. I've unplugged it numerous times. Cool thing is, it saves the time, which is good. So if I watch the bubbles right there,
and shuts it off. See the line pressure slowly going down, that's why the bubbles are slowing down. It's actually shut off the, the solenoid. Now, to tell you the truth, this fitting is not necessary. It's just what I already started using. I'm going to continue using it. You can just stick the hose inside your um, culling chamber and that will be fine. I like this because, like I said, the one-way valve is really nice. Um, then I can unhook it and set it off to the side and the CO2 will not ever escape. Alright. Eh, I tried making it work. It does work. It took a real long time though because I had that going complete max. Here I'll turn it on. I had it going crazy. Like that. And if I would have went any higher, it would have been bubbling out here because this is not completely airtight. You can see some's coming out already. So what I'm thinking about doing is connecting this to there so that there's no water because it's also evaporating that water, which is not a good thing because fogged up everything in here. Yes, there is some small raddies in there. It fogged it up dramatically. It's all fog on the sides because of that, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is connect that hose to that barb right there. This will not screw on down there, but the hose will be at least connected. And I'll probably give it a little bit of a twist. At least I can have fine control. I may, might be able to hear it out of here. So, yeah. It's definitely a really good idea. It's just now I know that the, the bubble counter is not the greatest part of the idea. Um, the bubble counter will, I mean, I had it going full max and it was 20 minutes and they were just asleep. So, got to give it a little bit more, a little bit more on what this bubble counter can handle. But got that nice fine tuning right here that will actually fine tune it. So, in a way I still think it's a win, but... I'm going to leave that up to you guys to decide if it's an actual win or not. So, I like it. I'm actually going to probably hang this up from the ceiling just so that the gauges will be facing me. I am it. Probably have it like hanging like this since the hose will be actually right there and it won't be connected to that. That way I can see the gauges, see when um, it's actually engaged or when it's empty. So, I still think it's a win. Now it's up to you to see if it's a win or not. See if you want to put the time and effort into it. Um, I like trying different things. So if you like seeing different things tried just out of ideas, like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you later. I'm out.